Expedition Romans, The Return to Community. Hello and welcome to Some Assembly Required, our podcast here at Wayne Fleet BIC Church, where we discuss life through the lens of our Anabaptist roots. My name's Julie Adams and I'm here with Pastor Renee Kivit. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wow. Whenever you're listening. Whenever you're listening. We hope it's good. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Yes, so good to be together here as we um, not quite close out this series. Nope, we're very close. But we are very close. Mm-hmm. The end is in sight. The end is oh, nigh. The end is nigh. We've almost gotten down the other side of the mountain. Yes. And uh, so far, no one's gotten hurt. I think going down can be just as tricky as going up. Yes, absolutely. You can hurt your knees coming down too if it's really steep. Sometimes after, I don't know if you've ever gone downstairs, gone yes. up or downstairs with sore legs, like mm-hmm. after exercising mm-hmm. or something, oh, yeah. um, going down is harder. Yeah. It hurts more. And let's be honest, it hurts a little bit yeah. <laughs> in this expedition too. Yeah. Even uh, last week, Pastor Trevor was talking about being devoted to one another. Yes. And that can be hard. That requires the big S word, submission. Yeah. And uh, and it can be, yeah, it can be tough going downhill. And mm-hmm. and so, but also exciting. Like, I don't mean yeah. it all oh, in yeah. a bad sort of way, but it requires us to selflessly look at ourselves. And yep. and so today we're sort of, that, it, it, that theme of um, being devoted to one another really sort of, I would say, can sort of carry on in, in mm-hmm. this message theme as well. And and really, um, I talked about on Sunday about my sister has dual citizenship. Yes. I have a sister who uh, married an American, uh, Jolene and Bruce, and, and uh, they live in Pennsylvania. But mm-hmm. back in the olden days, you know, we, we used to say the words dual citizenship. Yes. And now it's funny because Canada recognizes her dual citizenship, but the Americans don't recognize. Uh, that, that's how I understand it. Don't oh, recognize. Okay. But they, they allow you to carry two passports. Okay. So it's a different wording. Yes. Um, so Joe can carry uh, two passports, and um, and you can use those worldwide, either one, depending on where you're going. And sometimes there would be an advantage to mm-hmm. one only carrying other. your Canadian passport in some places, right, and yeah. only carrying your American. So there are benefits to both. And then because she has citizenship in both, she actually has obligations in both countries. Oh, interesting. Right? So even... And, and then, privileges, too. And privileges, yeah. yeah. She could vote. Or, exactly. You know. 100%. So it's uh, it's kind of like that in the message yeah. today where we, you and I, have dual citizenship. And now not yes. like I only... I, I only have one passport that I too. can see. Me too. Me too. Just Canada. Mm-hmm. Go Canada. Same. Which is marvelous. But uh, really, as followers of Jesus, mm-hmm. we have we live in two kingdoms or in two realms. Um, the, the earthly kingdom we live in, so yep. the country, Canada. And then also, sort of like the heavenly realm or the, the realm of uh, living w- with our church community. And so I'm going to in- intermix those two. But sure. um, it's, it's, it's coming to a head for Paul here. And he's talking to... The Roman churches, right? Mm-hmm. And we got to we got to think way back to like the first couple of messages and remember that these churches were full of two like very very diverse people, Jews and Gentiles, and then really wealthy people and extremely poor people and yep. people who were masters of slaves and people who were the slaves. Yeah. So this huge diversity, and he is coming to them with information that is like brand new and different, mm-hmm. especially thinking about sort of separating out our obligations to the society we live in and our obligations to one another as believers and, and to God. Yep. So in Roman society, they were totally intermeshed, like yeah. this this religion and politics. They, totally. Yeah. And okay. so they, they had, um, like they worshipped their emperors. <laughs> they really, it was cult-like. Yeah. How they, um, and you know, it was a requirement uh, to worship and Nero would have been um, the emperor at the time, mm-hmm. and he was zero of a fan of Christian people. In fact, he they, it was a massive fire that went through Rome, and I believe it was either a third or a half of the city was burned, and he wow. blamed it on the Christians so that he could persecute them. And some people believe he probably started it on his own so that he could blame them, but whatever. Wow, yeah, conspiracies exist all over the place. Yes. So, but nobody really knows. But you know, and uh, and so when Paul starts out. So think about that. Think about Nero. They do not, you know, he he hates these Christian people. He's persecuting them. They've just been able to come back. Like they were all kicked out at one point. They've come back to Rome. And Paul starts out with a banger. Okay. Chapter 13 is just like, whoa. Mm -hmm. So let everyone be subject to the governing authorities. 
for there is no authority except that which God has established. Like, whoa. (laughs) Yeah. Are you kidding me? Like Nero hates us and he's trying to kill us and, you know, none of the emperors have been friendly to us and you are telling me that we have, we have an obligation to be subject to them and what, like what in the world does that even mean? And And why would we do that? Right, right. (laughs) And it seems like a terrible idea. Um, And when I I was thinking back into the Old Testament, when the Israelites who had um, God ordained leadership, Mm -hmm. like a Moses or a Joshua, but they always were asking for kings because they wanted to be like all the other countries around them. Well, all the other nations, they have kings and like we feel left out. And God's saying like, no, you don't actually want kings. Yeah, this isn't in your best interest. No, it's not in your best interest because kings are human. And so sometimes they will be evil and mm-hmm. sometimes they will be good. And so there is, um, but he, God does allow them to, it sets up for them this yeah. process of having kings and leaders. And so as we, as you look through the Old Testament, you see some marvelous leaders and some horrendous kings mm-hmm. um, who are evil and who do very evil things and yeah. um, lead the, the country, the, the nation of Israel into terrible things. And yet God ordained the system or the process of kingship and leadership because they, because they asked him to. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so the, I think that's sort of where this, this pr- the process is coming from, where it says, for there is no authority except under which God is established. So God has established governing and ruling authorities. He allows, you know, we, there are systems where, I mean, if God wanted to strike down, which I don't believe he will, every bad leader, well, goodness, mm-hmm. we'd all be... <laughs> Well, <laughs> country, right? So, I mean, there is a system yeah. and, and he's saying that system is there for a reason. And that system, um, you know, we need laws. We need, we need governing authorities or, mm-hmm. or we would be put into chaos. Yeah. So there is an important value. So then he's saying to the, to the, them and to, and to us, like, we need to be subject to the governing authorities, mm-hmm. which is tricky because we don't yeah. like the subject or, or submission word at times. Um, and sometimes it works great. Like when I'm getting a speeding ticket, I maybe don't feel so great about all the laws of the land because I, you know, feel like I yep. deserved to go as fast as I wanted to over the speed yep. limit because I had, I was late and I was busy and whatever yeah. else. Right. Um, but it is important to have, to have that kind of, um, rule and law and order in society. Mm-hmm. So he's saying, you guys, it makes a big difference. In fact, it makes a big impression when you follow the governing authorities and I don't know if, if people can remember back in Titus chapter three. So we studied Titus in April, May. Yeah, in the spring. And um, similarly, Titus tells the people of Crete, like, you need to obey the governing authorities mm-hmm. because it makes it it, it 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 makes an impact. It shows who you are. It shows you're willing. And so this is a sort of another reminder. It's and it's there's another passage. I think it's in First Peter that says a similar thing. So. How can we um, be good, hearty members of society and make an impact because we're followers of Jesus? Mm -hmm. So by being subject to the laws and by paying our taxes, that's another one. Ooh, you know, that's always not so fun. But again, something that um, is addressed very specifically in chapter 13, talks about paying our taxes Mm -hmm. and also talks about sort of paying what you, what you owe. So like that could also be like paying debts back to one another. Oh, okay. Okay. Paying what you owe to people. Um, being res- like a responsible citizen in that fashion, yeah. um, and also paying respect and honor to position. And what so, does that mean? like, like, um, like respecting your governing authorities. Oh, okay. Like respecting okay. The, the the position of what of of what they hold, even if you don't agree with them. Hmm. Which, whoa, we are not good at. Yeah. I'm just gonna say, like the flags I see running around here from time to time. You mean the physical flag, not the last name. Excuse me. Yes. The physical I'm flags totally that some people name. have on their yes. houses and whatnot. Um, while I may or may not agree with our governing authority currently, the disrespect of that is, I think, one thing that that's what yes. Paul's talking about, right? Like, mm-hmm. let's be honest. You can disagree with someone without being disrespectful yeah. and dishonoring. Um, and I think that is in particular, and people can disagree with me. That's, that's totally fine. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think Paul is calling the Roman churches and, and I see this call, you know, uh, to us as well. Mm-hmm. And so then he carries on. He's like, you know what? Like, it's not just about not keeping the law. Like, don't just not murder one another. <laughs> 
love yeah. each other. Take it one <laughs> step further. Take yeah. it one step further. This is in our thing yesterday. Like, don't just yes. take these laws literally. We were at a, a pastor's gathering yesterday. And don't just take the laws literally. Like, actually, we're called as Christians to go over and above that. Yes. Um, we're called to put them into action. It, put something into action. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, he, you know, Paul reiterates that. Like, you know, don't steal, don't covet. Yeah, all those things are good. But actually, <laughs> you really should just be loving people. Yeah. Um, which is which is hard, yeah. right? Which is hard. Um, and then the last sort of section of how do we behave, you know, what is our, in, in society is, you know, behave in the, in the light as you would in the night. Huh? Oh, so, and then it, it sort of lists some things, you know, drunkenness, sexual immorality, debauchery, mm-hmm. dissension, jealousy, instead of being part of all those things in society, which we can see in society, Yep. all of that mm-hmm. as followers of Jesus, we need to not be like any of that. Participate in that, yeah. Right. Yeah. We need to clothe ourselves with Jesus. So we need mm-hmm. to look different so that we can, again, impact this world we're living in. It's not our first authority. God is. Yes. But in the country we live in, we have obligations so that we can impact the world we live in, mm-hmm. which which is a really powerful th- thought that our witness can be loving people. Mm-hmm. Our witness can be that we are not acting like other people are acting it's just it it, it, that could be a fairly silent witness but i think it speaks loudly Mm -hmm. um if we don't want to use our words even um being good citizens is speaking loudly Mm -hmm. um and and paul is saying you know to the to these poor roman Roman churches who are literally being persecuted like you've got some obligations in society yeah you know and you can't go hide and pretend society isn't there or leadership isn't there or whatever like you can't mm-hmm. go hide like live in the world you live in and make an impact by being subject to governing authorities paying your taxes and doing all these kinds of things um and so that's our first obligation in our dual citizenship uh, uh system here and our and our second obligation is to one another mm-hmm. as followers of jesus and, and to god and so that's kind of like one uh one group and so what does it mean and so that's kind of where i said it was kind of like trevor's um uh, message last week was be being devoted de- exactly mm-hmm. and what does it mean to be devoted to one another and I'm like oh yeah I'm devoted to my husband to my kids to of my course. family mm-hmm. to I'm devoted to all sorts of people that are really easy to be with and the people that I love what does it mean to be devoted to everyone yeah especially Trevor's last point was to those who are against us right 100 percent yeah yes and so that so we're right into that exact <laughs> well even in society that could be those people who are against us yes so that actually could work right into chapter 13 and then also in chapter 14 it right away starts out with you know what when you disagree with one another on secondary issues don't fight about it mm-hmm. like it's like be mature and don't fight about it yeah um and so um Paul is talking specifically in uh, this chapter. He addresses two different issues, and, and we could make it any issue we wanted to that is not a sin issue. So these are not sin issues. Mm-hmm. It's how we like get along with each other. Yeah. Um, when I have a different preference than you, do I look down on you because you have a different preference, or do you look down on me because no. I have a different preference? Um, and so he talks about meat specifically at the beginning. Yes. And it's not like vegetarians versus <laughs> carnivores. Okay, that's not exactly yes. what this is about. Although I'm sure some people have joked about that. <laughs> um, this is about Jewish people. This is about now in the church, right? We've got Jews and Gentiles and the Jewish people who like were such strict rule followers. Yes. And they had massive um, kosher food laws. Mm-hmm. And so he's saying, you know, if, if some of you are so worried that following Jesus is about, you know, meat, the people who aren't worried about it shouldn't look down on them, shouldn't judge them. Yeah. But Paul does say, um, he calls them people of weak faith. And so I did a lot of study about what that could Which actually mean. Which group are people of weak faith? The people who are so worried about the rules. Okay. Yeah. And so the people, so it says, it very the very first verse says, welcome the one or accept the one whose faith is weak without quarreling over disputable matters. So one person, one person's faith allows them to eat anything, but another whose faith is weak only eats vegetables. And I kept thinking, what does it mean? Like I had to hunt yeah. that down. I wasn't exactly sure. What does it mean that their faith is weak? And um, a number of uh, commentaries basically say like, the over-scrupulous are weak in faith. So those who are like so panicked about um, whether they're following every single rule so very yep. carefully, that that's actually weak faith because when there is freedom in faith. Mm-hmm. And so he's uh, that comparison is important. Um, 
And then the next sentence of don't look down on me. So Julie, don't look down on me because my faith might look different than yours because I have different yeah. preferences. And, and um, hopefully that I would understand one day the freedom I do have in Christ to eat mm-hmm. bacon and other things, you know, yeah. or whatever else. That, that would have been, um, a pork would have been certainly one of those things that the Jewish people wouldn't have eaten. And remember yeah. back in, oh shoot, I shouldn't have said it, back in one of the gospels where the vision comes down and, 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 um, and the blanket comes open and all the animals, we can eat all of the animals. And, yes. and God, you know, Jesus is presenting this sort of new day. Like this is a new day. There's a new covenant. Yeah. You can eat, everything is clean. You know, everything is, everything is okay yes. to, um, to eat. And, and so Paul is saying, you know, we have preferences, you know, some of you, you know, might want to eat meat and some of you don't. And like, let's just love one another and not be critical of judges, yeah. judges of one another. Similarly about the Sabbath, like what exactly it means, the Sabbath. He talks about there's certain days, like some people consider one day more sacred than the other day. Mm-hmm. And I got right away thinking about like when I was a teenager, like what did you not do on Sunday? Shop. 100%. And in my church, you didn't go to restaurants either. Yeah, I don't. I was, well, by the time I was a teenager, we did okay, a little bit yeah. of that. But mm-hmm. uh, certainly when I was a child, mm-hmm. same. We wouldn't oh, yeah. we didn't you go didn't. into stores. We didn't. 100%. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you didn't mow the lawn. Mm-mm. Any kind of work. And and uh, so, so, you know, there are issues of our day mm-hmm. where we could, um, you know, we could become critical of one another. Um, and, and I don't think it was bad at all that in trying to keep the Sabbath day holy, my parents and grandparents had different expectations of what that looks like than I do today. And I don't think that what they did was weak in the faith. I think, I believe that with their whole heart, they were trying to keep the Sabbath, uh, yeah, yeah, keep the Sabbath day holy. And so what that looks like, you know. Some people were allowed to work, but you couldn't work if it was like different kind of work. And so, you know, it, yeah, like, like a mandatory like shift work. Or something, right. So that was OK. It? But yeah. like my mowing the lawn wouldn't have been OK or, or something. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. And so that is what this whole section is talking about. You know, how do we treat one another when we like for me, I'm not going to mow the lawn on Sunday. But for you, if you mow the lawn on Sunday, like like, does that mean I'm better than you or you're better than me and I'm a better Christian or whatever? So that is a, that's a good, this is a good conversation to have because I think, mm-hmm. uh, even recently, like there's lots of issues we could put in this category. They're not yep. sin issues and they're not, they're, they're secondary issues, but we tend to fight about them like they're primary issues. Yes. Um, do you, uh, how do you, how do you, or do you allow your kids to participate in Halloween? That could be one of those particular yeah. oh, issues. Oh, that one's pretty, uh, hotly debated be, sometimes. And fairly recent yep. in my mind, who you voted for. Yep. who you didn't vote for, yep. uh, 100% hotly debated. Um, so there are issues that we have even today. It may not be meat or not meat. <laughs> um, it may or may not be how we you know, keep certain days holy. Mm-hmm. Um, but we still have our own set of issues. And so thinking about how we care for one another and the obligations we have to one another. And basically Paul is saying like, we don't need to be judge- judgmental about that toward one another. And we don't need to think that we're better than you. And... We don't want to cause each other to stumble. So we don't want to cause each other to have a hard, to have, um, to, for it to become hard for one another to love the Lord or to be part yeah. of the body. And so sometimes it means I'm going to have to give up what I think is the right thing and not worry about fighting about it. Yeah. Uh, which, which is not my first nature. No. Nope. I'd love to be defensive. Yeah. And to cling to what you feel right. strongly about. Because right. Because you don't generally do some of those things unless you feel Right. passionately or strongly about them. right right <laughs> and so it's all about learning what what are the secondary issues and then what is more important my my rightness mm-hmm. or your ability to love Jesus <laughs> whoa right yeah um and and I think that is a huge issue and, and we've talked about alcohol specifically yeah uh, with our life groups and and had this conversation with our young adults and having a drink of alcohol is not a sin issue drunkenness certainly is it's yes. spoken about oodles of times that's not complicated in my mind um but is it necessary um when you are going out with a group of people if there's a potential that someone could be struggling in that area mm-hmm. you know to say we're not going to have a drink because you know it, this potentially could cause someone else to stumble right yeah. who who really has it and so my need for a drink or not to have a drink is outweighed by my love for the mm-hmm. people in my sphere or the people that I'm with. 
Yeah. Um, like who cares, you know? And, yeah. and so that has been a life group, really a life group policy that we actually implemented it because it was a hard issue that people sort of struggle with. And when we went out with our young adults a couple of weeks ago um, to a restaurant and I said, Hey guys, like, just so you know, I know some of you are of age and yep. you have your family's teaching and your own preferences. Um, but when we gather together, like just in case it is a struggle for someone, we're not going to put anyone in a position that would be uncomfortable, yes. you know? And you know what, if you don't like that, I'm sorry, you know, but for yeah. the love of the total of the whole group, I think it's fine to say, you know, we're not going to do that this time. And yeah. and everyone was so respectful and people were understanding yeah. and agreed, you know, and that's, you know, if it's, if it's not their preference, that's fine. And yes. so I thought that's a really beautiful working out of yeah. what Paul is saying here. You know, if you, if we love each other as a body and we are part of this family together, you know, how can we help one another not stumble? How can we not be critical of one another yeah. when we, um, when, how we play out our faith, um, sort of is public, you yeah. know? And, uh, and so I think these are good things to think about. They're hard things to think about. Yes. I wish it was two separate sermons really on some level because, <laughs> you know, uh, it's, it's so important, but I think, you know, ultimately as we are first, as Trevor said last week, mm -hmm. devoted to God first, if our focus is fully on him, these other issues that we can fight about or be frustrated about um, can really sort of dissolve into not as important. Yeah. Um, when our eyes get focused on me, when, when my eyes are focused on myself, yep. they're all important. Like yeah. all my yeah, things yeah. are important. <laughs> um, and so as we are devoted to God first, we can be like a society, we can be in society and be impacting them in mm -hmm. really powerful ways with some of the examples Paul gave, and there could be others. And when I'm focused on God, my church family, like I can love them because, because I'm not focused on myself. You know, I'm focused yeah. on God and he's like, here, we're going to love people. We're going to do that this way. It might mm -hmm. not be our favorite way. It might not be our preference. I mean, yep. we could talk about music too. There's so many different things, right? Yep. The time something starts. hundred like percent. These are all down with the, some of those details right. that are right. kind of inconsequential. Yeah. yeah. And we hurt, we can hurt people yeah. badly and deeply. Not because they're weak people, but because they're, maybe their faith is holding on to something that ours isn't. Mm -hmm. And I might say, well, that's just immaturity. They need to grow up and learn that it's not, <laughs> they're not right, you know, which is so critical and so judgmental. Yes. And Paul speaks very clearly too as well. You know, mm -hmm. if you think you're, <laughs> if you think you're all that, you think you're better. Actually, chapter 15 is also going to address yeah. the group of Gentiles who at the beginning of this chapter are probably like neener, neener to the Jews. Yeah. See, I told you it was no big deal. And chapter 15 will remind them that uh, they're not all high and mighty either. So it's just good. It's leveling the playing yeah. field. It's helping us as a, as church family to love each other, uh, to be devoted to God first and then, and then to one another in practical ways. Yeah. This is like what the chapter or this um, section is called the return to community. It's like, a, how do we do community really well? Mm -hmm. um, we're good citizens and we love God first so that we can love each other. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. That was a good, uh, almost wrap up. So next week we are wrapping it up. Yeah. Next chapter 15, and 16. One, yeah. And then we're on to Advent, uh, December 1st. Oh my is, goodness. Well, there you Ring go. Ring the bells. It. It's Christmas. You heard it here first. <laughs> Julie <laughs> loves Christmas. She's so excited. At Christmas time. I love Christmas at Christmas time. We're almost at Christmas yeah. time. Mm -hmm. There's so. another issue. Oh my goodness. Some people have their Christmas trees up November oh, yeah. 1st and some December 20th. Well, if you want to know when the right time to do it is, you just come and talk to me. No, I'm kidding. I'm joking. <laughs> well, that's a perfect example. Yeah. And we will love each other no yes. matter when you put your tree up. That's awesome. If you want to get in touch with Pastor Renee, you can reach her at Renee at WayneFleetBIC.com. And my email address is Julie at WayneFleetBIC.com. So thank you for tuning in and we look forward to connecting with you next week. Have a great week.